surface to do that. And the Coco Touch controls have support for copy paste built in. So if you're using the built in Coco Touch controls, depending how you use them, adding cut, copy, paste to your application will either be no work at all or very minimal work. Cut, copy, paste. Next, landscape. Ever since iPhone 1.0, ever since the beginning, we had support for landscape built into Safari. We used the accelerometer, and so when you uh, just moved it from portrait to landscape, we automatically relayed out the page in landscape. This is great for reading some uh, stories on the web. A number of our users also love the fact that if they wanted to enter text into the web, they could use that big widescreen landscape keyboard we had. Well, we're now in iPhone 3.0, taking landscape and that landscape keyboard to all of our key applications, starting with mail. So now in iPhone 3.0, when you rotate from portrait to landscape, mail automatically relays out in landscape. This is great for reading some messages, especially if you get a nice widescreen attachment. You can see the whole thing right there in the window. We're also adding support to use that landscape keyboard to compose new messages. So landscape and mail. Next, notes. Again, in portrait, if you rotate to landscape, it'll automatically relay out. And you can use that big landscape keyboard to create new notes or edit existing notes. We're also doing it for our messages application. So again, portrait support, rotate to landscape, relays out, and you can use that landscape keyboard for new messages. So landscape now taken to all of our key applications. Next, messages. We have a fantastic text messaging application built into the iPhone. And we have some nice enhancements in iPhone 3.0, starting with the ability to forward and delete messages. You can forward and delete individual messages and also multiple messages. So you can select multiple messages and forward all of them together. But the big news for the messages application is we're adding support for MMS. So this, this is support for multimedia. You can now send and receive photos right over the cell uh, network. You can send and receive contacts. We use the vCard standard here. So when you receive a vCard, you can automatically add it to your contact list. Send and receive audio files. And you can listen to those audio files right inside the application. And you can even send and receive locations. So you can go to the Maps application. Let's say you're going to meet someone at a location, or someone's coming from out of town, you want to send them directions to the hotel, you can send them that location right from Maps. And all of this has been added directly into the existing application. So now you have one app to send and receive text, photos, contacts, audio files, and locations. That is what we're doing with messages. Next is a brand new application, and that's voice memos, and it's gorgeous. This is what it looks like when you're recording a voice memo. You can re use this to uh, record voice memos to yourself, to record lectures or interviews. It'll use the built-in microphone. You can also plug in an external microphone. Once you've recorded it, you can edit that by trimming the memo, and then you can share it, either by sending over email or you can send it over MMS. So voice memos built in to the home screen with iPhone 3.0. Next, calendar. In iPhone 1.0, we supported personal calendars. So you could create appointments for yourself, meetings, and it synchronized between your phone and your Mac or PC using iTunes. Last year, in iPhone 2.0, we added support for Exchange. And this was always up to date, because we synchronized over the air using ActiveSync. So your calendar was always up to date. And we actually allowed you to either view your personal calendars or your exchange calendars, or you could combine them on one calendar application. This year, we're adding support for two additional calendar types. The first is CalDAV. So CalDAV is a calendaring standard that's supported by Yahoo, by Google, by Oracle, uh, by Mac OS X server, and a lot of others. And it's great for shared calendars. So you could have like a, a shared family calendar where everyone in the family has access to it 
and sees the changes that anyone else makes. So CalDAV. And next is support for subscriptions. So this is the ICS format. It allows you to subscribe to things like your favorite sports team schedule, or you know, movie premieres, or national holidays. So, some really nice additions to the calendar application. Next is stocks. We have some nice additions here to stocks. This is what our stocks application looks like today. We're adding support for news stories, headlines, right at the bottom of the application. We're also adding support for details right in here. So you can see highs and lows, PEs, and even market cap right here in the app. We've also added a landscape view. So when you turn it to landscape, you get this nice big chart. If you put one finger down, you can see the stock price at that point in time. And if you put two fingers down, you can see the delta between those two points. So some nice additions to the stocks application. Next is search. Last year with iPhone 2.0, we added support for search into the contacts application. And our customers told us they love this, the ability to quickly search across all their contacts and find what they're looking for. Well, this year, we're adding search to all of our key applications, starting with mail. In iPhone 3.0, you'll be able to search messages from someone to someone, search subjects, and search all headers. In addition, if the message you're looking for isn't on your iPhone, you can continue that search on the server. Now, this is supported by Exchange 2007 and most IMAP servers. So it'll continue that search on the server, respond with all the results, and you can view those messages right on your iPhone. So search in mail. Next, we're also adding search in calendar. So you can search across the calendar for that appointment you're looking for. Also, search in iPod. Search for you know, all of your songs, but artist, album, song name. You can also search for all your music, videos, TV shows. And search in notes by the title of the note or the entire body of the note. So we're adding search to all of these applications. But we didn't stop there. We thought, wouldn't it be nice if there was a single location you could go to search across all of these applications. And that's exactly what we did. We created a new home screen where you can search across all of those applications, and we call it Spotlight. And so, now to the left of the other home screens, there's a single location where you can search across your phone. You see at the bottom here, where we show what home screen you're on, there's a new icon on the left, which is for Spotlight. Let me go ahead and demo that for you now. So here we are uh, on our home screen. I'll just flick to the left, and that is Spotlight. Again, here's the home screen you're used to. Here is Spotlight. I'm going to go ahead and search for, let's say, Tim. T-I-M. Go ahead and say search. Now it's searched across the entire, you know, the phone. See, the first couple results, those are contacts. So if I tap here on Tim Young, it takes me directly to that contact inside of the phone application. And from there, you could dial them. You could send an email, could go and look up uh, his location based on uh, here in Maps. Let me go back to the home screen. The next three items, New York Times, the Time Machine, and Times Square, those are all applications. If you're like me and you have well over 100 applications on your phone, this makes it really easy to find and launch an application quickly. I can just tap on, let's say, the Time Machine, launches that ebook application right there, and now I'm reading it. Let's go back to the home screen and to Time Machine. The next three items, that's searching my entire music library, the iPod library. So I'll tap on Take 5. That's on the Time Out uh, album, so it matches T-I-M. And again, it just starts playing. So it's that easy. If you want to play some music, go right to, uh, to Spotlight, search for what you're looking for, and play it. Back here in Spotlight, you can see the next one, it found uh, a note that had TIM in it. Uh, it found two email messages. Again, I could jump right to those. And even a calendar appointment. And that is right next to your home screen, a brand new home screen to search across your phone. That is Spotlight.